years ago, I had a shot that gave me a glimpse into the future. The shot was full of Lupron. Lupron, if you don't know, is a chemical that races your estrogen and it puts you into premature menopause. And so here I was, 36 years old, going through menopause. And I did not know that you could be extremely dry and soaking wet at the same time. <laughs> I didn't know about how many changes of pajamas I would have during the night. I didn't know about the hair growing in places there had never been hair. And the rage, oh dear Lord, the rage. <laughs> And it occurred to me, why is it that I don't know what this is? Why don't I know what this is supposed to feel like? I mean, my mother went through it, but she wasn't really communicative. And then it dawned on me, I am aging, and I don't know what to do. And I was scared to death, and rightly so. If you go to the grocery store, there are so many images of women getting older and magazines judging them for it. There are some magazines that point to lines on women's faces. TV shows will ask, oh dear Lord, what has she done to her face? And I thought, the media is judging women for aging Heaven forbid you have saggy cleavage or crow's feet, but then also shaming them for taking care of themselves in any way they see fit. And I was really frustrated. And I do what I do when I get frustrated with the media. I go to work. My job is to study media representations of marginalized groups. And here's what I found. Media socialization is a theory that says that the television, or media, but we're talking about television today, that television tells us who we can be and what roles we are to have in society. In other words, television creates a reality for what is possible. So, if you're growing up in the 1980s, you learn, watching Claire Huxtable, that it is possible to be a successful African-American lawyer and have a family and be married to a doctor. You learn that that is something that is possible for you. Also what I learned is that television has not been kind to women as they age. Remember Aunt B? She was a spinster. The next one's gonna freak you out. Alice was 44 years old. I know. Edith Bunker, harried housewife, 46. And she did go through menopause for half of an episode, <laughs> never to be talked about again. Florida Evans from Good Times, again, strong mother, but didn't really talk about what it was like to be, at one point, a single mother raising all these children and aging. And then, in the 1980s, something wonderful happened. In 1984, there was Jessica Fletcher for Murder, She Wrote, played by Angela Lansbury. And she was great. She was fit. Remember, in the beginning of the show, she'd be riding her bike or jogging. And men always seemed to love her, you know? The men would always flirt with her. Of course, don't invite her to a dinner party. Someone would end up dead. We don't want to do that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Every time she comes in where someone's killed. And then in 1985, the Golden Girls. <laughs> well, I didn't make it. Uh, I'm one of the wits. Um, the Golden Girls were four women aging, living in the same house, working, taking care of themselves, eating cheesecake, and having sex, right? When Blanche was 52, remember she thought she was pregnant? There was that episode but in actuality, she was going through menopause. Again, that was at the end of that episode. They talked about it, never to be talked about again, but it did happen, it happened for her. And then if you zoom forward to the 2000s, you have Juliana Margulies, 
Alicia Florick from The Good Wife. When the show started, she was 46, ended, she was about 50. And this was a new representation of women aging or getting older on television. She was extremely sexy. This was actually um, one of the, f the first year the show was um, airing. This is one of the ads that they ran. Um, again, she's very sexual. She's in charge of her decision-making after her husband did what he did. Um, and so she was starting over again. And she was leading a group of people. And then more recently, there's Annalise Keating from How to Get Away with Murder. She is fabulous. She is fierce. She leads a group of young people who actually listen to what she says to do, <laughs> like my students do. And I thought, oh, this is a new image of women. They have sexual agency. They're making decisions. But then something dawned on me. Something was missing. And I didn't recognize it until I was watching an episode of How to Get Away with Murder. You see, these images of women in their late 40s, early 50s, what they're really saying on the shows, they're saying that in spite of getting older, these women are still fabulous. And I think a better storyline is because they are getting older, they're still fabulous. So this was the episode of How to Get Away that I saw that I thought, wait, there's something else going on here. So obviously this picture of Viola Davis She's wearing her wig. She's got her makeup done flawlessly. The picture next to it is a scene where she's taken off the wig, taken off the makeup, and the gray in her afro, the furrow in her brow, that is who she is. And that is authentic. And those of you who watch the show know exactly what she said in this scene. I won't say it because this is being videotaped. But <laughs> she says to her husband, what is a picture of your hoo-ha doing in a 20-year-old's phone. So she's saying, I know you're cheating on me with a 20-year-old. And in this scene, she is more herself than she's ever been on the show. She is empowered, she is strong, she is vulnerable, but she is telling the truth. And again, I think this is where the power is. And I thought, television is not telling those stories. And so what are women to do if they don't see that they can be fabulous and mature? So what do women do? Well, some women cut into their faces to excise the years, to tell the world, I still have a story to tell. I can still tell an interesting story. Or women insert toxins into their cheeks and their foreheads to remain relevant in today's media world. Recently, there was a California lawsuit with Junie Huang, who sued IMDb and its parent company, Amazon, for putting her actual age on imdb.com. According to Huang, she was saying that in Hollywood, youth is power, youth is king. And by putting her actual birth year on IMDb, it was keeping her from getting work. And so then I asked myself the question, is this IMDb's fault? Of course it's not. IMDb puts everyone's ages, right, on the, on the database. Really, it's our fault. Every time you click online when it says, you won't believe this actress from Little House on the Prairie. You won't believe what she looks like now and you click on it, the clickbait, you're telling the media it's perfectly okay to shame women for aging however they choose to age. But more than us, it's television's fault, right? It's the executive's fault. What is fascinating to me is that television is an industry run by money. And 50% of the population are 50 and over. And 70% of the disposable income in this country is controlled by that group of people. And, this is fascinating, in the next 20 years, that group, 50 and over, stands to inherit 
15 trillion dollars. Most of that money, not for nothing, inherited by women, because the men go first. <laughs> Yet, television producers, knowing this, knowing that the whole sole purpose for network television is to deliver audience to advertisers, they're ignoring this group. They're ignoring stories about these women at their own financial peril. Because really, at the end of the day, this is where the money is. This is what your bread and butter is going to be. But they're ignoring it. And I think they're ignoring it for two reasons, to be honest. I think first, executives are fearful of their own aging process. And then second, I think that they are socialized to believe that those women's stories don't matter. And so ironically, or maybe not so ironically, the most powerful stories told about women who are aging are found on streaming services that don't rely on advertising. So this is an example of one of those. This is Grace and Frankie, played by Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. They are in their late 70s. Interestingly enough, the men who play their husbands are younger than they are. You know that never happens. <laughs> And these women, if you don't know the premise of the show, I'm not going to ruin a whole lot of things or ruin part of how to get away with murder. But um, these women have found themselves living together in a gorgeous beach house, of course, um, because their husbands have left them for each other. And so these, women's are, these women are rebuilding their lives and they're figuring out who they are and they're dating and they're using organic lube because they're having sex. And so that is a part of the magic of getting older. Another example of this show, Transparent, if you watch the show, and if you're not watching the show, you really should be watching the show. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, this show is about a transgendered woman in her 60s who has discovered that she is transgender, and, or sorry, is, living, is starting to live as a transgender woman. And so the first two seasons really focused on Mora's transformation and Mora's discovery of what it is to be an older woman in this country. But by the end of the third season, I'm not going to ruin it, by the end of the third season, something else wonderful happens. It's not just Mora who is coming of age. It's Mora's wife, Shelley. Shelley really discovers who she is after Mora has left her and, okay, I'm going to ruin it, after Shelley leaves her new boyfriend, who is taking advantage of her, taking her money, in her, um, uh, basically. And so she kicks the boyfriend out, and she begins to tell her own stories. Um, and in this scene, she's singing um, an, an Alanis Morissette song on a cruise ship, and it's just fabulous. And so it is here, online, that we have power. And so what I want you to do... I want you to tweet about these shows. I want you to share them with your friends on Facebook. I want you to tweet the producers and the writers, and then tweet some of the advertisers of how to get away with murder and say, we want to see more of these stories. These stories are important to us. And I am not just speaking to women over the age of 40. I'm speaking to all of you, even you 30-year-olds, because you know what? You're in the fourth decade of your life. <laughs> and Oh, stop whining. And, <laughs> and the fourth and fifth are just around the corner. And when you do this, when we all do this, we give voice to women and we tell little girls that their stories will matter throughout the rest of their lives. Thank you very much.